the signals coming from? What area? The atrial. The atrial? Mm, nope, try a little bit further down the pathway. Mm, AV the node. Where? The AV node. The AV node is correct. The atrial ventricular node. It's, a, it's an area of tissue that is also capable of sending impulses. Well, actually every single part of the heart is able to start an electrical impulse, right? But we know that SA node is the one in charge, but when it fails, the AV node will take over. So it's the AV node, that piece of tissue and its surrounding area. So it's not just that area. So depending where exactly in the AV node or the area the signal is coming from is what's going to determine the morphology, right? The shape of the P wave. You said that is inverted. That's one of them, right? What, uh, what about if it's after the R wave? Can the P wave be after the R wave? Um, yeah, um, it's, uh, that's if it's coming from the bundle of his. Correct, what is further down the right, the AV node or the bundle of his, you're gonna see the uh, P wave after it. Right? So we cannot measure any PR interval at that point. So the morphology of the P wave is one of the criteria that we have to look at, right? We look at the rhythm, we look at the regularity of the rhythm, the heart rate, we look at the P wave morphology, the PR uh, interval, and then we also look at the Q, um, at the uh, R wave, right? The QRS complex. So those are the five criteria that we look at. So please try and try really hard to remember those five criteria because that's what we're going to be using with every single uh, uh, waveform that we evaluate. Okay, so we know that now that you know what the P wave uh, is, where it's coming from, what it, when, it, when you see it, you're going to know where it's coming from. Now we talked about one type of a junctional rhythm. Okay, let's call them junctional rhythm. The first one we discussed was a PAC, a premature atrial, uh, I'm sorry, premature junctional complex. Just like premature atrial complex, we have a premature junctional complex, all right? So remember, in, when we discuss PACs, we know that there is always a rhythm, a regular rhythm, okay? And then we have these oddballs showing up, right? These sudden um, spontaneous complexes that are showing up and we call them premature atrial complexes. In the AV or the junctional area, we also have the same thing. We have a, we might have a sinus rhythm, but then we might have a, a junctional uh, um, complex premature, meaning that it's gonna happen before it's expected to happen, okay? So always make sure that you name the underlying rhythm and then the, uh, the PJC. So you're gonna, again, evaluate the rhythm, the rate, the morphology, the PR interval, if, if it's uh, possible, and the QRS duration, which is usually normal. In this case, the P wave is inverted and may uh, always be before the QRS complex, buried within the QRS complex or even after. So premature junctional complex can be identified by simply looking at the regularity of the, of the rhythm. If it's regular and all of a sudden you see this you know, all of a sudden, uh, uh, odd looking um, complex, then you could probably uh, evaluate it by looking at the P wave, the QRS and all that, go to the criteria, and you can determine that it is a, an impulse coming from the AV node. So those are premature junctional complexes. Then we went into junctional escape rhythms. A junctional escape rhythm originates again in the AV junction. It has retrograde, uh, P waves, and at the same time stimulating the ventricle. So we're going to have a escape rhythms that are a bit different. What makes uh, an escape rhythm a little bit different? An escape rhythm is not going to have an underlying uh, rhythm like the, the premature complexes. You're going to have a complete uh, different a junctional escape rhythm. And what really makes it different is the heart rate. Uh, remember that I've said uh, many times that the lower the impulses in the heart and the electrical pathway, the slower the heart rate. So in this case, we're gonna be looking at heart rates between 40 to 60 beats per minute. So 
right from by looking at a rhythm, you can think that it may be a a sinus uh, or a bradycardia. Okay, it, it may look like a bradycardia, but in this case, if you know, if you evaluate the rhythm and you see, look at the 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 rhythm, if it's regular, it looks pretty regular. Okay, look at the uh, the rate. What's the rate? Well, let's say it's fifty. So you're thinking, oh, it's a bradycardia. Okay, hold on. Don't jump to conclusions. What is a P wave morphology? Is there a P wave present before every QRS? Yes or no? In this case, we know that with AV junctions, what happens is that, as you know, either be inverted, they can be biphasic. Remember, biphasic means they can one one uh, part of the of the P wave can be up, and then the other part can be uh, inverted or completely inverted, hidden in the QRS or after. So. Once you do that evaluation, you're going to say, wait a minute, this P does not look normal, right? And that P doesn't look normal. So that means we probably have a junctional escape rhythm. Okay, so now at this point, the AV node has taken over. The SE node is not firing anymore. These are not premature junctional complexes. We're looking at a complete junctional escape rhythm. That means that the AV junction is completely in control. And it's because the ASA node has failed. So again, Go through the criteria. Can you tell me the five criteria that we need to look at? Um, rhythm, rate, P wave morphology, PR interval, and QRS duration and morphology. Exactly. Yes. Yes. And we have to do this with you know with a with a, a discipline uh, where we look at a, 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 a what you call it. We look at a a. We look at a rhythm and we just don't jump to conclusions. We got to use the five, uh, five criteria all the time. So again, the distinguishing factor is what with um, junctional escape rhythms. What the is the wave. huh? The P wave. Yes. Also, what else? I would say the main characteristic or difference. Um, I'm not sure. I would say it's the heart rate. The heart rate. We're talking about junctional rhythms. Okay. We, we're talking about junctional rhythms. So when you see a, a slow heart, when you look at it and you say, well, this looks kind of slow. And you're thinking again, bradycardia. Hold on. Don't jump to conclusions. Look at it again. Evaluate all the criteria. And when you see that P wave that looks odd, different, or in some, some shape, it just doesn't look normal then you're probably looking at a junctional escape rhythm. Again, remember that the difference between a junctional escape and a premature complex is that uh, premature junctional complexes are gonna be uh, isolated. It's gonna be one and then two regular beats and then another one, you know, just like premature atrial complexes, they become in every fourth beat or so on. So those are premature complexes. Uh, in this case, you have a complete uh, rhythm initiated by the AV junction. So try to remember those characteristics. That's why I ask you to make those index cards, write down the criteria, and that way it, you really have it engraved in your mind so that you can be able to distinguish the difference between them, okay? Now, what, how is the patient affected with a, um, with a junctional rhythm? What is actually happening in the mechanical function of the heart or what is not happening? Think about it. If you have an impulse that is starting already from, let's say from the middle, all right? From the middle of the pathway. It's not starting from the SA node up here and traveling down and down and AV node and bundle of his and, and then bundle branches and all that. It's starting kind of from the middle. It's like somebody that's starting a race in the middle of the, you know, of the, of the race itself. Obviously, they're going to finish faster, correct? So if they were to start again, they would probably get there faster than the one before them. Okay, I don't know if this is a good example, but the impulses that starts here in the middle will get there faster, right? Depolarize the atria going backwards and the ventricles going forward. So we have impulses 
try to remember that impulses do not just travel in one direction. They travel in every single direction. So when the impulse from the AV node is fired, it, it also depolarizes the atria going backwards and the ventricles going downward. All right, so you have a shortened amount of um, repolarization, a shortened period. So the, the atria and the ventricles are not allowed to expand and refill like they should. So at the end of the contraction or the cardiac cycle, you have a shortened repolarization because they're, they're uh, stimulated fat sooner. So they're, they're trying to expand and all of a sudden they get another impulse, right? Expanding, all of a sudden they get a, they don't have a chance to really refill and you know, stretch and contract. So they call it the atrial kick. Okay, so this is what happens. They, the heart loses that ability, that atrial kick to be able to uh, push, right? To increase that stroke volume, to have good cardiac output. And that's what the, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I said before, it's all about cardiac output. If the heart is not unable to really expand and contract normally like it should, you're gonna have decreased cardiac output regardless of what kind of rhythm you're looking at. Whatever rhythm you're looking at, if there is a, an, an effect in the you know, uh, refilling, re repolarization, and then also depolarization, you're gonna have an impact in your cardiac output. I hope I didn't confuse you anymore. Uh, do you have any questions? No, that actually cleared up like the questions I had. Oh, very good. Okay, so again, try to refresh in your mind the signs and symptoms of cardiac output, what you see in people when they have decreased blood going to the brain and to the organs and all that because it affects every body system. All right, so if a uh, escape rhythm a junction escape rhythm is between 40 and 60, and all of a sudden it goes a little faster, 60 to 100. Now you have what? What do we call that rhythm? All right, you're in the expressway, you're like grandpa going 40 to 60 miles an hour, and all of a sudden you speed up 60 to 100, you go 80 miles an hour. What, what did you just do? you accelerate it, right? You accelerate it. Uh, the vehicle, in this case, the heart is accelerated. The heart is going between 60 to 100 beats per minute. That means that this is an accelerated junctional rhythm. So again, go through the criteria. What is the rhythm? Is it regular? Let's see. Yep, seems pretty regular. Okay. Uh, what about the P waves? The P waves look, you know, measure P to P pretty regular. You look at the rate, well, it's about 80. Okay, it seems pretty normal. And let's look at the P wave morphology. The P waves, oh, they look a little funky. This one looks kind of, you know, biphasic. The next one looks kind of, you know, uh, inverted and so on. So right away, you're thinking, ah, maybe it's a junctional. Is it? Maybe. Okay, so we got something down. What about the P interval? Can we measure it? Well, here, yes. Uh, but in this one, no, because it's not visible. There's no P wave. Okay. So again, this is leading, pointing towards the junctional rhythm. Okay, what kind of junctional rhythm? Well, let's look at the last criteria, QRS. Is it 0.06 to 0.10? Yeah, look pretty normal. They all look pretty identical. They look within the range. So you're left with those two criteria. The P wave morphology is different and the PR interval is gonna vary, right? Why? Because the P, the, the P wave is at different locations. Sometimes it's before, sometimes it's hidden, sometimes it's after. So then that leads you to conclude that this is an accelerated junctional rhythm, an accelerated junctional rhythm. So again, it's very important that you, we go through the criteria because very easily you can say, oh, well, this is a normal sinus rhythm. Well, wait a minute. What's the difference between a normal sinus rhythm and then it's uh, uh, an accelerated junctional rhythm. What is the difference? What would you say is the difference? Accelerated and which one? And a normal sinus rhythm. What would be the, the difference? Remember normal sinus rhythm, everything is normal. <laughs> you have P waves, you have QRSs, they're regular rate and rhythm. There's a P wave before we QRS, the pure intervals are within parameters, the, the uh, R wave is within parameters or QRS rather. Okay, so what is the difference? The only difference is going to be your P wave. 
Every time you look at junction of rhythms, if you see odd looking, weird, strange looking P waves, you're gonna be leaning towards a junction of rhythm. In this case, it is accelerated because it's between 60 to 100. Escape is 40 to 60, accelerated 60 to 100. And then we have the junctional tachycardia. The junctional tachycardia is, is exactly the same thing. It's a junctional rhythm. You're gonna see the different, you know, strange looking P waves. Very strange looking. What is the determining factor, the main difference you're gonna find is the heart rate again, the heart rate. It's a lot faster between 100 and 150. Right away, when you see the rhythm going fast, what comes to your mind? What is the first thing you're gonna think it is? Tachycardia. A tachycardia, okay, good, you're in the right track. So you look at the rhythm, are we gonna see a regular rhythm? With a junction of tachycardia, yes. Remember the, the impulse, the AV node has taken over, right? Escape, um, uh, rhythms um, are normal. Everything is regular. Same thing with the tachycardia. They're all gonna be regular. P waves are regular, R waves are regular. So, okay, you got that down. What about the rate? Well, you notice that it's about 130 beats per minute. You counted it, it's about 130. Uh, the P wave morphology again starts looking very different. What do you have to do to the machine? You increase the paper speed to be able to visualize the P waves a little bit better. You visualize them and then it's like, well, these P waves do look quite funky, right? They, they all look different, okay? Or they may look the same, but they're all biphasic or inverted or after the R wave. So you know this is a junctional rhythm, okay? So you got one thing pointing towards a junctional rhythm. You look at the PR interval. Can you measure it? Yes, no, no, yes, yes. Okay, so the P wave is off. Obviously, something is wrong with it, okay? And the cure duration is going to be normal, 0.06 to 0.10. So the fact that it is a, a heart rate of 130, it's a tachycardia, you're right. But now you add on the fact that the P waves are looking very different. You can pretty much state that this is a junctional rhythm, okay? This is a junctional rhythm. Junctional, I'm sorry, junctional tachycardia. Junctional tachycardia would be the correct name for that rhythm, all right? So again, let's make sure that we look at all the criteria. Now, what happens when somebody has tachycardia? Think about the heart. What is happening or not happening in the heart? How is the patient affected? They get like heart palpitations. Palpitations, right? The heart is, instead of going, no, no, contracting, no, contracting, contracting, you have, you know, more and more of a very, very fast uh, depolarizations that are not effective, okay? If, if you run, okay, are you going to get tired running at a normal pace or are you going to get tired faster when you sprint? Which one? Faster. When you sprint, right? If you take off running really fast, or well, you're gonna be tired probably in a block or two. But if you take your normal pace, or well, you're gonna go maybe, I don't know, a mile, two miles, whatever you can. So this is the same thing with the heart. If, you, if it goes really fast, it's gonna get tired. You're, the person is gonna feel the shortness of breath, the palpitations, because your heart is like, and you feel like, my God, I think my heart is like, wants to pop out of my chest. It could even, ha uh, even happen to people that have uh, anxiety attacks. People that have anxiety attacks can also feel like that. They feel their heart uh, trying to pump out of the chest or beat out of the chest. So look at the symptoms, monitor the EKG tracing. Look at, always look at the patient first. I know sometimes we jump like, oh my God, look at the machine. It's going crazy. This patient has a, a junction of tachycardia, you know, 130 and whatever not. And I'm like, well, oh, wait a minute. Maybe something is wrong with the leads, the wires. So let's not forget to always look at the patient first. If you see them, obviously like, Having shorter breath, you're like, oh, they look a little pale. They look, they don't look right. This is one of the things, Cynthia. If you continue your your um, your career in, in healthcare, um, you're you're feeling always what we call your gut feeling, right? If you see that a person is not doing well, it, they probably not doing well. All right. Sometimes we try to justify it in our minds, like, no, oh, maybe you know it'll go away in a little bit, or let's give them some oxygen or something, right? 
if you know that a person is not doing well, we need to coordinate, communicate with the doctors, with the nurses and so on. So always look at the patients, not just uh, rely on the machines because the machines can throw you off at times. All right, the last one, I think we, we didn't get to cover so much were supraventricular tachycardia. And now it sounds scary, right? Supra means what? Supra means above, above. Ventricular obviously refers to the ventricles. So we have uh, rhythms that come from above, right? These are your ventricles. These two are your atria, right? This is your vena cava. This is your atria, atria, and these two are your ventricles, all right? So where is the impulse coming from? Above, not in your ventricles, but anywhere in the atria, anywhere. That it can occur anywhere. So the impulses are gonna be coming from here, here, or both at the same time. You can have the SA node fire, and then you got another crazy group of cells in sending impulses, and it could be really close to the, um, to the electrical pathway, uh, like they could be right next to it and they could be in and out, in and out. We call that re-entry, re-entry pathways. Some of them find a shortcut, right? Let's say the left atrium, some cells decide to send an impulse. It'll go down to the ventricles. It's going to depolarize the ventricles, right? And then it's gonna come right back and come right back in its circles around, it, it finds a shortcut. So any rhythm, that comes from above the ventricles, we're gonna call them uh, supraventricular. In this case, we talk about tachycardias. So we just finished talking about tachycardias, junctional tachycardias. We said it was, uh, what is it? What is the heart rate for uh, ventricular tachycardia? 100 to 150, right? Yes. Or 180. I think it's 180. I look on page 174, you'll notice that it says 180. So anything probably above 180, if it's coming really fast, it's not just one single impulse coming in, you know, from one little part. Remember this, it's not just one impulse. It's going to be probably two or three or more impulses coming in, depolarizing the ventricles, depolarizing the atria almost at the same time, right? So your heart is going to be going very, very fast. At this time, the P, the P, um, uh, we call the atrial rate, the atrial rate is going to be different than your ventricular rate, right? If you get a six second strip and you count all the P waves, you might find, I don't know, 20, 20 times 10, that's 200. And then you count the, the ventricular rate, you might find 15, 150. So you're gonna have to really uh, document the exact uh, rates of the P wave and, and, uh, and, the, and the R wave, the QRS complex. So. Some SVTs are re-entry pathways. That's what I've mentioned right now. They occur where there is a block or a short circuit in the normal electric pathway. So for example, if a person has a heart rate or a heart rate, a heart attack in any part of the, um, of the electrical pathway, let's say in the bundle branches, the right bundle branch that feeds, right? It stimulates the right ventricle. If there is damage there because of a heart attack, the signal is not going to be able to go through there because that tissue is dead. It does not conduct, okay? So what happens? That signal will find an alternate pathway, right? It'll go around it. It doesn't necessarily go like perfectly around it. Okay, let me find, just go around it, you know, come back over here. No, it's gonna happen. It's gonna just go right through it and it's, go, it's going to um, uh, depolarize your ventricles a lot faster. And it comes and it starts again and it starts again. So you're going to find that depolarization is going to occur a lot faster because of this, because there's tissue or damage to the electrical pathways. Now, what damages the electrical pathway? Well, one of them obviously is heart disease, right? Having a heart attack, sometimes medications when uh, they're uh, over medicated uh, with certain uh, medications to help the heart, sometimes they re reach a toxic level and, uh, and the electrical system goes kind of haywire. All right, it, it happens. Uh, what else? Uh, sometimes smoking, caffeine, people that drink a lot of um, uh, caffeinated, uh, what do you call it, energy drinks. Sometimes your heart can go so fast that it will lose its rhythm and you'll have the, the cells that are in the heart. Okay? They're very excited. You can think of the cells in the heart like, uh, you know, uh, 
a room like I don't want to say a stadium, but a room filled with a lot of hyperactive people. They're just very, you know, uh, jumpy. You know, they're just waiting for action. That's what these cells are. They're just waiting to be uh, uh, initiated and stimulated so they can start the complete process. All right, so supraventricular tachycardias, um, it could be any kind, um, any type of rhythm that originates from above the ventricles. And we talked about a few in atrial arrhythmias. I don't know if you were in that class, uh, but we talked about uh, atrial, um, what is it called? Um, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation. Those are the two rhythms that are very common uh, atrial fibrillation more common, but uh, they're also very dangerous. And uh, yesterday, or Monday there, I spoke about Wolf Parkinson's white uh, syndrome, which is a type of SVT. There's an el extra electrical pathway between the atrium and the ventricles. It's kind of like a short circuit. Think about uh, if the pathway is supposed to go down this way, okay, all of a sudden there's a little shortcut here. So the impulse, remember the impulses don't just travel straight into there. They travel everywhere. So obviously one of those impulses is going to make it to that little shortcut. And it's gonna, a shortcut and it's gonna beat these right here. So again, that would be WPS, Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. It's very rare, but uh, it does occur. And it's, it's rare, but it's not that rare uh, that you need to know about it. So what, how do you know a, it's a WPS, right? W uh, PWS. How do you know? Well, it's distinguished by, it has a characteristic called a delta wave. The delta wave is a little curve that forms as a Q wave, QRS complex is forming. It forms a little, a uh, little, like a little notch, like a little step up and down. So that is what distinguishes a, a Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, that delta wave that you're going to see. Uh, I'll show, um, I'll share a screen right now with some of those so that you can get an idea. It could be a slight curve or it could be like a little step, like a little notch. That is considered a delta wave and that would classify it as a Wolf Parkinson uh, White syndrome. So a syndrome is a group, a group of signs and symptoms. All right, mm, what else? Any questions on uh, supraventricular tachycardias? So the main ones are atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and uh, wolf parkinsons white syndrome. Well, in the book, the, in the criteria, it said that the atrial, like, usually won't be identified, or the P wave won't be identified. The P wave will not be identified? In which one? In the supraventricular tachycardia. Okay, let's see it. And let's look at the criteria. So the rhythm uh, is going to be regular. Okay, so you're gonna measure all the uh, RRs and they should be pretty, pretty regular. The atrial rhythm may or may not be seen depending because if there's no P waves visible, then you can't measure the, the uh, regularity of the P waves. The rate between 150 to 250 beats per minute, which is pretty fast. The P wave morphology is going to be a factor. The P wave may be present, may occur, you know, may be hidden or even hidden with a T wave. I think we saw a couple of those the other day, right? We looked at the different T wave and how the T wave was almost finishing up and then the P wave showed up, it looked kind of funky. So those are some uh, palpitations, fluttering of the heart or some of the symptoms and again, the, the uh, end result here is that it's, there is low cardiac output, very low cardiac output. So what is the normal cardiac output uh, per minute? Do you remember that? 60 to 100. That is a heart rate. How much blood does your heart pump out every minute? Remember the formula? Seventy times your heart rate. Seventy times your heart rate. Oh yeah, seventy. Right, seventy times eighty. That's five hundred and sixty milliliters. That's half a liter every minute. Every minute. So it's a lot of uh, 
you know, uh, blood uh, being pumped out of your heart uh, just by being sitting down or, you know, being calm. So imagine when you start exercising, your heart has to keep up with you. And if you're not used to it, right away, you're going to start to feel, you know, pretty, pretty ugly. But uh, after that, you know, heart gets, uh, learns. Remember, your heart is a muscle, so it has memory. So the more you work it, the more it's going to remember, like, oh, I got to stretch, I got to stretch, I got to stretch. I got to work, got to work. And, and you, you condition it to a different level of, uh, of extra, uh, exercise or exertion. So it's important. That's why being sitting down, being sed sedentary is not, it's not a good thing. And um, do you exercise regularly, Cynthia? Uh, yes, I've always been in sports and stuff oh. like that. Awesome. Very good. So even at this young age, your heart already has good condition. As you get older, uh, don't get sedentary. Keep on doing, you know, exercise regularly since, uh, you know, our lives are mainly, uh, you know, in an office or, you know, they're very limited to physical activity. We have to do some kind of physical activity. Okay. Uh, quiz time. Have you gotten uh, around to the chapter reviews on chapter six? Mm. on chapter six i think i think so you think so okay um i was going to tell you yesterday i sent the grade reports did you get it yes i saw like the email but i haven't opened it i just okay. saw it this morning okay yeah it's a link it's going to show you your grade reports if there's anything missing or you don't agree with the grade you're like oh sir i should get an a because i do my work uh, let me know. We can go over it. But other than that, uh, you're doing pretty well. I don't remember your grade right top of my head, but let me uh, log into the website. I find this very interesting topic. Uh, I don't know about you, Cynthia, but uh, when you um, when you learn about the heart, when you get to understand it, and you start working in a field, perhaps you might consider uh, pursuing a career as a EKG monitor technician, or you go into uh, nursing or some field related to healthcare. If you can understand the heart you're gonna understand a lot of things, a lot of things. Where are we at? Chapter six. We are talking about sinus arrhythmias, mm, no. We were talking about junctional rhythmias. Oh, I know why I was in the wrong chapter. Hello. Okay, let me share this with you. Okay, what, can you see the, um, the screen? Yeah, what are you looking at? The, the chapter eight paper. Chapter eight. Yeah, it's uh, like a chapter ahead of our book, the one that we're using. So let's see what you're looking at. I'm trying to find some rhythms that we can interpret 
for practice. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll do them here too, okay, when you come here. I'm trying to change screens. I'm lost here. I have too many screens open. Oh, where is it? Uh, no, no. Oh, the stupid thing. Oh, where is it? Uh, hold on, Cynthia. I'm trying to get back to them. Where am I sharing? Where is that screen? Why can't I see it? I can see it on mine. Oh, hello, here it is. I see it. You see AV junctional arrhythmias, right? And AV blocks. We're not into AV blocks yet, but. So this book, actually, it's a, like I said the other day, it's another book that also has a lot of very good, it, it's very good about actually explaining things. So it's very, very good. Um, I like the other one because it's a little bit shorter, more condensed. But at the same time, um, oops, what am I doing? So this, this one explains, right? Uh, it gives you an example. So this is a normal sinus rhythm with one PJC. Where is a PJC? Is it the fourth before the fourth one? Before the fourth one? Oh, it tells you right there, right? Where? Right here. Oh. <laughs> you hadn't seen that, right? No. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I saw it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's telling us right there. But that's good. I mean, that's why that's how we learn, right? We don't see it, but you did identify the right one. Is that the one you were talking about? Yes. Where's the P wave? After. After this one right here, right? That's your P wave right there. It's after. So you have your P, QRS, and then T, and then nothing here, QRS, and then boom, a P. All right. So you should not have, right here, you should have a, a, a S wave, which would be something like this. This would be your S wave. And it goes back up to the isoelectric line and then your T wave, QRS, I'm sorry, P wave, QRS, S, S right here, and then back up, T wave, all right? So you did identify the right one. Now, when you name it, remember we have to, when we have premature complexes, we have to name the underlying rhythm. So you have to, again, go through other criteria, check the regularity, one, two, okay, that's odd. And then it continue. So the rate seems to be pretty regular, except for that one. Uh, the rhythm, I'm sorry, the rhythm is pretty regular. The rate, you can say one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, just a, you know, a six second count, that's 70. And the P waves, you see they're all normal, except for that one. The PR interval is uh, when measurable here, like here we can measure it. It should be between 0.10 to 0.20. It's all good except for that one. The curious complex, and they all look pretty good between 0.06 to 0.10. So that's fine. So this would, you, you could call it a, a, a normal sinus rhythm with one, one PJC, because that's all we see, one PJC. And you know it's a PJC because, the, because of the P wave. Does this help you? Yes, but how come there's like a section that's straight? 
here? Yeah. Because there's here, this is where you have the missing normal sinus, uh, the curious complex. If you put your calipers from here to here, it will land about right here. But instead of getting your regular one, you got a PJC. Oh, okay. So it's missing. But it could, you could have another one here too. It doesn't matter. You could have one here and still have a PJC. It doesn't necessarily have to be missing. All right. So they're pretty. They're pretty benign. They're not that serious, uh, unless they occur more often. Then you can you can you have to do something about it because they they can progress to more serious arrhythmias. Here's another one. Okay, now don't don't get scared when you see something like this, okay? Uh, you have your P, QRS, this is your S, T wave, this is a really tall T waves, and then you have this. It almost doesn't even look like a wave, right? Uh, you have your additional P here. There's your QRS. The QRS, Cynthia, is always going to be upward deflection. All right, it's always upward. And then there is no, unless this is your P wave, but it's really deep P wave. Okay, so this would be your premature junctional complex. Why? Because if you put your calipers or your fingers on the screen and you put, you know, with the R's, right? You notice that that one is uh, out of place and the other ones are pretty regular. So that is your PJC right there. Here we have two PJCs. Okay, again, let's look at the regularity, the rhythm. Oh, there's one. And you can tell by the P waves, right? The P waves, what? What happened to this P wave? Inverted. Yeah, here too, you see? And then it, the, the rhythm resumes regular. So these are premature junctional complexes that are showing up. These are signals that are coming from your AV node. They're traveling back upward. So you have a retrograde signal with a P wave, all right? So that kind of gives it away. So you know, you know a junction of rhythm when you see a weird looking P wave. Very good. So that's a normal sinus rhythm with paired PJCs. Not just one, but paired, there's two. That means they're right next to each other. They could be trigemini like the other ones, the PACs, they could occur every third or fourth beat or whatever, then you call them a, by Gemini, if it's every two, every two beats, uh, or if it's trigemini, if it occurs every third uh, after the third beat, and so on. But these are these are paired PJCs. So right now, what is this telling you? What would you think right here? What is it? What is the heart telling you? The SA node is firing, and then the AV node is firing. If it becomes more often, you see more PJCs more often, it's telling you that the AB node is trying to take over. So you, they're going to occur more often because the AB node is trying to take over, uh, over. What is the normal heart rate of your AB node? 60, 200? No. 40 to 60. Any okay. tissue, any cell in the AV area, AV node and the surrounding is between 40 to 60. That's the baseline. That's where it starts. And then you go accelerate it and then you go to the tachycardias. All right, so a junction of rhythm, a normal one is going to be um, between 40 and 60. This is when we talk about escape rhythms. So once you hear escape rhythm, you're like, oh, the SA node is gone. The AV node has now taken over. This is when you see, this is when you see the escape rhythm, okay? When your SA node fails. Okay, this is a bit more complicated. It has more stuff in it, right? It seems like a normal sinus rhythm. And then you have this pause, like you said, like a, an arrest, a sinus arrest. There's no electrical activity. And then you have this beat that kind of looks awkward. It doesn't have a P wave or it's very, very close right here, right? This beat is very, very close to an escape beat. Or you could just call it, 
I don't know if you could call it a PJC. Basic rhythm, 60 beats, what is it, 30, 40, 50, 60. So we call this a normal sinus with sinus arrest and a junctional escape beat. Okay. So what defines a junctional rhythm? What defines a junctional rhythm? Primarily, it's going to be your heart rate and the P waves. All right? Where's your P wave here? Do you see any P wave? Uh, if, if any, you don't see it, right? I don't see it either, but it should be around here somewhere. And the heart rate is what? 50. 50. It says 50. Why is it 50? Because this one is incomplete. We don't count this one. One, two, three, four, five. So we only count complete um, complexes, okay? But they so all the, look the same to me. I'm sorry? But they all look the same. Yeah, they all look the same. Not to count. The P wave is hidden in your QRS complex. So it's really not visible. So you cannot measure the PR interval. The QRSs look normal. The rhythm looks redder, pretty regular, right? Yeah. They all look the same, they look pretty uniform, except that there is no P wave. And if it is, it's hidden somewhere in the QRS. So you have a complete junctional rhythm. It meets the criteria. The P wave is absent or not measurable. The PR is not measurable. And the heart rate is between 40 to 60. In this case, it's 50 right in the middle. So this is a complete junctional rhythm. See how it says here, ST segment depression. We haven't gotten, there's a, actually a chapter that talks a lot about it. But here, um, what it means is that the ST segment is from here, the S wave starts here, and the T wave is over here. The isoelectric line is right here. You see this straight line? This is your isoelectric line. You follow it. What it's talking about the ST segment, the beginning of the S to the, to the beginning of the T wave is your ST segment. This is below the isoelectric line, and they call it ST segment depression. Now, why is that happening? There's a lack of oxygen in the heart. That's why you see ST segment depression. And we'll talk more about that later, but that just so you know that that's what it means. The ST is below the isoelectric line, so they call it depression. How about this? Where's your P wave? Looks like it's after, but very little. Yeah, very, they're very, it's very small. QRS, oop, right here, P wave. And then your T wave over here. Nothing here, QRS, P wave, T wave, okay? So again, what is the heart rate? 30. It says 33, right? It says 33, mm -hmm. I would say 40, but if you do the 1500 method, you'll uh, find that it's 33 beats per minute. Do you remember how to do the 1500 method? Um, by counting all the little squares and then exactly. dividing 1500. Exactly, yes. So you would count, count the big squares, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times five, that's 45 into 1500, should give you about 33 beats per minute. So it meets the criteria the heart rate and the P wave morphology. So that is a what? Junctional rhythm. This one, there's another one, looks completely different, right? Where's your P wave here? Um, it's right before. Right before your QRS, that's correct. It's right here, right? Here and here and here, it's completely inverted. So PQRS, this is a deep S wave, right? It's really low. And then your elevated T wave, this is kind of high. It shouldn't be that high. It should be a little bit more round. So 
what is the heart rate for this one? It says it's about 35, we'll say 40, right? 35 to 40 beats per minute. Accelerated, same thing. It's a junctional, except the heart rate is faster, right? Here you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's call it 70 or 80, okay? Because this, the last one is incomplete. So it says 65 beats per minute. What's wrong with the P wave here? It looks like there's two. It looks like there's two. Yeah. Actually, the first one, let's look at the first beat, this one. P wave, this is your P wave. What's wrong with it? It's inverted. It's inverted. You have retrograde flow, right? Retrograde. And then this one would be your Q. This one is your Q. P waves should always be pointing up, but in this case, they're backwards. And then the next one, the next one is your Q, R, S, S is didn't fall below, but that's fine. And then you have your T wave. Your T wave is inverted. T wave inversion. It's also backwards. Why would you have a T wave? What is the T wave? What does it represent? It represents ventricular repolarization, right? The refilling, restretching of the ventricles. This one should be pointing up, but it's inverted. Hmm, why? Why do you have deflection like signals coming back up? Because there's probably dead tissue. Dead tissue re rejects or does not allow the signals to pass down into the ventricles to, to get uh, depolarized. So you have a retrograde flow in the ventricles. Now you got a serious problem. ST inversion is a serious problem. So when the T's um, inverted, it's like serious? Oh yeah. Anything that with the ST segment or the T wave, that is a problem. Sometimes it could be an electrolyte imbalance. Uh, it could be drug, drug, tactis, ugh, drug toxicity. So it could be a lot of things. Right here, the heart's telling you something is going on, something funky is going on. It is our job to report it right away so that other healthcare professionals can Take a note of it. This is a problem the patient has. You're going to take that problem and you're going to give it to the nurse who's in charge and the nurse gives it to the doctor and then they start doing something about it. Okay, but your job again is to report it right away. All right, so this is an accelerated junction of rhythm, right? The, the rhythm, look, it's pretty regular. They all look pretty uniform, right? They're happening about the same time. No big deal. The still the P are inverted. And then in the very bottom, the comment says ST segment elevation, because remember the isoelectric line should be about right here. So if you make a, a line with the ruler from here to this next one, you're gonna feed, see that the, these, uh, this ST segment is elevated. It's above the isoelectric line. We saw ST depression below it, right? And then your T wave up here. In this case, it's the other way around. We have, we have a ST elevation with T wave inversion. If you look at it, look at this peak, and then what does it look like if you see this? What does it look like? To you, what does it look like when you see this part, just the QRS and this part? It looks like a little chair, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen a tombstone from the side? Yes. A, tomb, a tombstone? Yes. No? Okay. We, well, in cardiology, we call this a tombstone because what it means is that the person is probably likely having a heart attack. It's, there's tissue dying. So it's kind of related, you know, with death. Oh. So tissue death right here. And this one goes higher and higher. Could so if, you, if you're dying, then you can get a heart attack? No, you get a heart attack and then you die. <laughs> so like if your tissue start dying, there's no, like, there's no way to fix it? Uh, well, yeah, there's uh, several things that we can do for someone that's having a heart attack. See, the difference between a heart attack and um, what we talked about in CPR class, we talked about cardiac arrest. People can get heart attack, right? All these arteries, right, or veins that are here and they're feeding your heart with blood, with oxygen, nutrients and all that. So your muscle can continue to, your heart continue to function. If there's, let's see, there's uh, an arteries that are clogged around here, right? and there's no more blood flow going to the tissue around it, well, what happens to that tissue? If there's no more blood flow going to it? Well, 
hung it's up and dying. It's gonna die. Exactly. We call that an infarct, right? An infarct means the tissue is dead. So when the signal, the impulses are coming down to stimulate it, they run into this dead zone and you're like, oh, the signal gets rejected. It comes back up. So you see an inversion, right? An inversion of the, the, the T wave. Does that make sense? I have to, uh, when you all come in here, uh, I'll try to illustrate it again. So y'all can have a, a you know, picture in your mind of what's going on in your heart. It's not only the electrical activity, but also the muscle is reacting to the, to the electrical impulses or not reacting, depending what's going on. Accelerate it. This is very neat. Look, very clean. What's wrong with that, with that picture? The P wave. The P wave is what? Like not visible. Not visible. It's hidden somewhere. You can't really see it, right? Uh, the ST segment is also a little bit below the isoelectric line. It doesn't say on it, but it's, it's a little bit, okay? So QRS, this is your S wave, okay? And then your T wave and so on. And the heart rate, we see it's about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about 80 beats per minute, more or less. It says 68 here, but it looks like 80 around there. Oh, you count this. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? There, the three marks starts here. So you count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So about 70. Say 68 here. I was counting all of them. But if you count from this line to this line, it's three seconds. From this line to this line, it's three more seconds. So this is the second strip. So this one doesn't count. Got it? Yes. All right. Very good. Moving on. Uh, we were talking about uh, accelerated. Yeah, accelerated. This is because it's uh, over 60. 60 to 100 is accelerated. Although it's a normal heart rate, but they call it accelerated. Now, I don't like this word parox paroxysmal. Okay. I don't like it because it's, I don't know, it's hard to find a meaning to it. Like to, for me at least, it's hard to associate it with anything. Um, we call them SVTs. In this book, calls them supraventricular tachycardias. Here, they call it paroxysmal. Uh, paroxysmal means that you don't even know where where what where it's coming from. Like you don't know where it's coming from. Well, really, we don't know. Uh, supraventricular tachycardia just tells us it's above the ventricles, but we don't know where it's coming from, right? Now, if you look at each uh, uh, waveform, you could probably kind of get near it, you know depending on the uh, what it looks like, you can kind of get an idea where the signal is coming from. But paroxysmal means that we don't know where it's coming from. It's unknown. So it's a uh, tachycardia is going to be over 100, um, 100 beats per minute. So this one, uh, we call it, they call it Junctional, paroxysmal junctional tachycardia. Because they don't know where the beat, the beat is coming from. But we can tell, or look, with a look at the P wave, where do you think the heart, the impulse is coming from? The AV node? Yeah, around the AV node, right? It's on, on closer to the atria because you can see an inverted P wave. And then you just measure, count it, go through the criteria, and you can determine more or less. Very good, very good. Okay, this section goes into heart blocks. We're not there yet. It's another chapter. So we're not going to go into that. So we go, let's go into the practice ones. This is, um, this book uh, covers two sections and, and the one that we're using, it goes one section at a time. That's one of the reasons that I like it. It's separated. But you could use this as reference too. Okay. What is this? Figure eight one, strip eight one. The P wave is not inverted. The so P wave is not inverted? Yeah, so does that mean that it's not junctional? Look at all of them, go through the criteria and give me your evaluation. Let's do a few and then we'll take a little break, all right? Okay.
Is it accelerated junctional rhythm? Accelerate, well, it's a junctional rhythm, but it's not, well, it's actually not a junctional rhythm. Okay, let's go through it real quick. So what is the rhythm? Is it regular or irregular? Um, regular. Regular, okay, very good. Uh, can you measure the PR intervals in this one? Yes. Okay, so you said it's a regular rhythm, right? You go at it, and what is, there's something wrong with it. Where, tell me where. Um, at the fifth one. The fifth beat, what is wrong with that beat? There's an inverted P wave. Correct, very good. And you continue, except for that one, what, is the rhythm pretty regular? Yes. Okay. So we said the rhythm is regular except for that one, right? One. The pure interval, let's just say it's within normal limits between 0.10 to 0.20 with three little squares to five little squares. The rhythm, in, uh, the heart rate, what is the heart rate? Remember, only count the ones that are in between the, the three uh, second mark. Yeah, like 50? Like 50. Mm -hmm. Like 50, exactly. 50 is correct. What about the QRS complex? Does it look the same? Mm, yes. Okay, they look pretty normal except for that one, right? Well, even that odd one is has a normal QRS. What about the P wave? Well, only one of them is like. Okay, only one of them is inverted, okay? So when you see an inverted P wave, what does that tell you? When you see an abnormal P wave, what does that tell you? You're looking at what? Junctional. A junctional, okay, very good. So you got the junctional part down, okay? Let's go back. If you have a P wave before every QRS and the rate is regular, Okay, the only abnormal thing about this rhythm is the heart rate. You said the heart rate is 50. So what would you call this rhythm? Give me a name, normal what? Sinus rhythm. You would call it a, a normal sinus rhythm with? Hey. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. So it's a normal sign is what? Rhythm with the PJC. Okay, there's one part that you're missing because of the heart rate. What do you call it when it's less than 60? Mm. When it's less than 60, you call it a? Bradycardia. Correct. Normal sinus bradycardia with one PJC, because that's all there is. There's just one. Oh, okay. So you can, you can label it. I'm going to print out some of these, okay, and for the other chapters and, and this so that y'all can work on them because this exercise is really, really helpful. So the complete evaluation for this would be uh, sinus bradycardia with one PJC. And it's, that's it, that's all there is to it. Sinus brady with one PJC. Let's look at one more. Oh, you're gonna freak out with this one, right? What is that? <laughs> I knew you were going to freak out with this one. <laughs> okay, let me let me break it down for you. I'm going to break down the first wave, okay? So, let's start here. This is your P wave. P wave and you have a long segment and then you have a deep Q. Deep Q, remember that little teeny weeny notch we see usually see like right here, 
or oh, actually not visible here, but it's usually very, very short. Okay, very short, like right here, and goes back up. This is over here should be your R wave. Yet we have a very elevated, very elevated T wave. I mean, I don't like this example because it's very difficult just to look at it, okay? Just to look at it stressful enough, okay? R wave is supposed to be right here, ST, your T wave is over here, it's inverted. And this is ST elevation. This is a, actually, what's happening here is that somebody's having a heart attack at that point. They're having what we call an acute heart attack. So if the, if the R waves are inverted, that means they're having a heart attack? Yeah. So this person's dying. No, they're just having a heart attack. Their heart, the tissue of the heart is dying. The person themselves are not dying yet. But if the problem keeps on untreated, right? Like if they don't go to the emergency room to get a heart catheterization or something, they don't take an aspirin or something, then the, the tissue death can, can continue to, to die. The, the tissue in the heart can continue to die until they have a cardiac arrest or they're gonna have very serious uh, injury to the heart. A lot of the muscle tissue is gonna be dead. That is a serious problem, obviously, okay. right? They're never gonna be the same again. So what ha like what's happening in the heart when like somebody gets a heart attack and dies like right away? Oh, that's cardiac arrest. Remember that when the heart stops completely? Mm -hmm. That's cardiac arrest. The heart has completely stopped. What we say? Elvis has left the building. That means that your heart has stopped completely. So in this case, what we see, well, there's other stuff into it, but I don't want to get into it because it confused you. So this is not very easy example to look at. But when you saw it, it's like, oh my God, what the heck is that looking at? You, you thought this was the R wave, right? Inverted. Yes. This is what we call a deep Q wave, a deep Q wave or a significant Q wave that is taller than your R wave over here. Your R wave is very visible. And then your ST segment and ST elevation with inversion. This one also has what we call a first degree block. Uh, uh, the impulse is delayed. You see how the PR interval from here to here, how many little squares is a PR interval supposed to be? Between what? Between three to five little squares. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little squares. So that PR, PR interval is prolonged. It's longer than usual, than normal. So what do we, well, we, that's another chapter, by the way. We call it uh, AV heart blast. I think it's the next chapter, as a matter of fact. Okay, so let's take a little break, all right? And uh, you can keep on looking at these and uh, I'll give you the answers. Uh, you know what, um, when we come back, I'm gonna give you this one. This one's a little easy, eight, three, okay? So you can work on it and then uh, we'll come right back. Take a little break, okay? Okay. Hello. All right. Are right. you looking at strip eight three? What? Strip eight three. Oh yeah. Have you evaluated it yet or not yet? No, I I just got back. Oh, you know what? That's too hard. Let me give you another easy one. Okay, let's do the next one. That one. Go through the criteria. What's the rhythm? Is it regular or irregular? Well, it looks regular, but just with sinus arrest. Very good. Sinus arrest is correct. Very good. So it's regular. Yes. Okay. Uh, what about the PR interval? Does it look normal? Yes. Yes. Okay. What is the rate? Like 50. 
50 is correct. So what does that make it? Any heart rate below 60 makes it a what? Uh, bradycardia. Correct. Very good. So the rate is 50. It's a bradycardia. QRS complex, how do they look? Is it between one and a half and three squares, three little squares? Are they, they look, they look pretty normal, right? Yeah. The QRS complex, okay. Last thing, what about the P wave? Is there a P wave preceding every QRS? Uh, not the fourth one. Not the fourth one, exactly. So what does this make it? What kind of, um, what kind of uh, complex is that? Um, a junctional. Exactly, a junctional. How many junctionals do you see there? Just one. Just one. Okay. So remember, when we have a rhythm that we have a P wave present be before every QRS, for the most part, except that one, we call it a sinus rhythm, right? Sinus, because this, the electrical impulse is coming from your SA node. So in all the beats except for that one, you have a sinus right, a sinus uh, rhythm. So we call it a sinus what? Because of the rate, we call it a sinus what? Bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia with what? Sinus arrest. Sinus arrest, correct, you're right. Sinus arrest and? PGC. How many? One. One PGC, that's exactly what it is. Okay, very good, very good. It's okay getting the, the rhythm of this. I feel kind and of <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, if you know this, Cynthia, you're probably going to, you can understand more things than most nurses won't understand, okay? Because um, in evaluating rhythms, not everybody can do it, okay? Not even RNs, not even LVNs, uh, and sometimes not even some doctors, like they forget about it, right? They can tell basic rhythms, but evaluating a complete six strip, six second strip, it's a little bit more challenging. So it says a sinus brady with a junctional escape beat after a pause in a basic rhythm. So you have that sinus arrest pause. Okay. Let's see. A ver cómo andas. Muy, muy. Vamos a ver. Let's do this, uh, this next one. This is a super easy one. Well, it's a tachycardia. Very good. Yes. Just looking at it, right? Yeah. What's the rate? Give me the rate. Like 110. Okay, very good. So it's a tachycardia. Um, what kind of tachycardia? A junctional, a supraventricular. Okay, you could call it a junctional tachycardia. You could also call it a supraventricular, but it's just a junctional tachycardia. Supraventricular, the rate is above 180. It's much, much faster. You could call it, you think of super, like super, like super fast. Okay, it helps you remember. Super fast or supra, supra fast. Heart rate is a, is a heart rate that comes from above the ventricles and is very fast, usually over 150 or 180. So this is just called a what? A junctional tachycardia. And how do you know it's a junctional? Because the P waves are inverted. Exactly. Very good. You are a smart. <laughs> Look at you. You feel smart now, huh? Yeah. So now when you see Grace Anatomy, now you know what they're talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> I see this one. Let's see how, how easy this one is. Um, I know it looks a little bit funky, you know, a bit more wavy and stuff, but don't get, you know, uh, like distracted by the, the different waveforms. But let me tell you, this is an easy one so you can evaluate it. Eight six. No, this is not. This is not one where we're looking at. No, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, how about this one? Eight seven. This one. Um, well, it's a junctional, and the uh, ray is sixty. Okay, so what do we call that? We have PACs, we have junctional escape rhythms, uh, PJCs, right? PJCs, we have junctional escape rhythms, accelerated rhythms, and then tachycardia. 
Which one of those four is it? This is where you have to remember the heart rates. Yeah. Um, accelerate. Accelerate is correct. And the other one's tachycardia. Tachycardia usually 60, uh, over 100. Uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, tachycardia is over 100, accelerated 60 to 100. And this is, uh, uh, what is it again, 60? Accelerated, junctional accelerated rhythm. Very good. Uh, and I think, do you have a, a good idea? What is this one? Of uh, junctional rhythms now? Yes. You understand, you know how to spot them right away, right? What about this one? Where's the P wave? Um, after. Mm-hmm. And what do you call this rhythm? Um, Remember the four choices I just mentioned. PACs, junctional escape, accelerated, tachycardia. Which one is this one? Only count the waves that are in between the six seconds, the lines. Because I know there's some that are before and there's one that's after. So you have. Is it junctional escape? Junctional escape is correct. Very good. What is the heart rate? 40. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, I'm so sad that the students are not here, but uh, it, I'm recording so they can watch it. All right. Okay, let's stop the evaluating here. I'm going to introduce the, um, the other chapter since you kind of have a good grasp on junction of rhythms now. All right. We're going to move on to Chapter eight, heart blocks. Heart blocks and dysrhythmias. Remember, we have a deadline to meet students, so we have to stay on track. Whether you're here or you're not, I'm gonna to continue to be here. I'm gonna lecture whether it's one or all four of you. Uh, I'm gonna continue and uh, you can watch the videos so that uh, you, know, you can have at least a basic understanding. And when you come into class, uh, remember we are meeting on Fridays so in person so that we can do more hands-on uh, practice uh, more the uh, EKGs. Have you had a chance to practice EKG, Cynthia, on someone else? Yes, I went on a Friday with Janie and... Oh, with Janie and Norman, yes. Okay, very good. So I'm going to do it again so you feel comfortable doing that procedure. That's the easiest procedure. This is the challenging part, evaluating the rhythms. Okay, so what is the next chapter? Heart block dysrhythmias. Heart block dysrhythmias, uh, what it means is that, remember the pathway, SA node, Bachmann's bundle, AV node, bundle of his, and then uh, we have the signal going back left and right to the bundle branches. So what is a heart block? What it means is that the impulse is going to be blocked for some reason, blocked, not stopped completely, but blocked. Kind of like when you're going down the expressway and there's uh, all of a sudden there's an accident and everybody slows down. Traffic almost comes to a halt, right? Sometimes it's just a detour, you know, kind of go around it and you keep on going, but it's slowed down. And sometimes you have to come to a complete stop. This is what you're going to think about when you think about heart blocks. Traffic, traffic, that's what it's about, right? The, the, the clear, the expressway is there's nothing, there's no cars. Things just flow along. But then once traffic starts to build up, it starts to slow down. And then something happens and then everything comes to a halt. That's what heart blocks are, okay? So we're gonna describe various heart block dysrhythmias. Start with the first one, the first degree, and then we have second degree, and then there's two types of second degrees, and then we have third degree, and then you have complete heart block, okay? So we're gonna look at those um, one at a time. Uh, in heart block rhythms, the electrical current has difficulty traveling, just like you have tr uh, trouble traveling through an expressway with traffic on, causing a delay in or absence of the ventricular depolarization. So the ventricles are not going to be depolarized in a normal time frame. It's going to be slow. The impulse is going to be slowed down somewhere, and then it goes through, and now the ventricles are. How does that affect the heart rate? Is it going to increase it or decrease it? Is a slow signal going to increase or decrease your heart rate? Decrease. Decrease is correct. It's going to slow it down. And it can get to a point where it's so slow that you have decreased what? 
decreased cardiac output. Output, yeah. Exactly. So we don't want that. We need our heart to keep beating between 60 to 100 beats per minute, right? So we're going to look at some uh, problems that occur in the electrical pathway where the signal is slowed down to a degree. Again, this is why they call degrees, different degrees, right? First, second, and third degrees that the heart is uh, um, impaired from contracting, decreasing, uh, resulting in decreased cardiac output. And of course, the symptoms of, uh, of the decreased cardiac output. So let's look at the first one. First degree AV block. AV stands for atrioventricular. First degree AV block. In first degree, there is a delay in electrical conduction from the SA to the AV. So you wanna write things down, make yourself an ACE cars. First degree AV uh, block, a delay between the SA to the AV. So something is happening somewhere in the atria. Let's say your SA node is right here and the signal is traveling here. Your AV node is right here, say for example, right? So something is blocking the impulse from here to here. So where are you going to see the change in the AKG? Right? You have your SA node fire, boom, B wave. P wave, and then this is your your uh, Q right here, R, right? You have your P wave. The P the P R interval is what we're going to be looking at. We said that the P R interval from here to here should be between uh, three liter squares and five liter squares, which is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. Okay, so you're going to count the squares: one, two, three, four. Obviously, this is a bad example because this is just a graphics, right? And it's not right. But if you look at the PR interval from here to here, it should be between three and five little boxes. So what's going to happen when there's a first degree block? This from here to here is going to be longer. Got it? So... That is what you're going to be looking at, at the PR interval. That is why it's one of the five criteria that we have to evaluate, because that's where things can also go wrong. So somewhere around here in your atria, the impulse is being slowed down. By what? It could be many things. It could be many things. My heart is fading away. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not magic. It's the, I think it's the, the lighting. I think it's the lighting testing. I know, maybe that'll help. Yeah, if there's any kind of shadows that happen with the lighting, uh, things start to fade away. See? Oh, wow. Look, it made it disappear. There you go. So, got it? The SA note to the AV note. This is the first degree. So, write it down. Commit it to memory. Any delay in the impulse between the from the P wave or SA note to your AV node, which is your PR interval, is affected you have a first degree AV block. So is the rhythm going to be regular? It should be. The P to the P and the RR should be regular. Do you get your calipers? Measure it, regular. The rate should be between 60 to 100. The rate should not be affected. The rate should not be affected. If it's affected, then we're dealing with another kind of uh, block. We'll go into it. Uh, the P wave morphology, completely normal. P waves looking up, looking nice before the QRS, everything's looking good. The PR interval is where we have a problem. The PR interval goes beyond the five little squares, 0.20. That is the first degree AV block. The PR interval is longer. But other than that, it's going to be the same. Just the PR interval, highlight it, make it a star, whatever you want. That is going to be the main problem with first degree AV blocks. The QRS should not be affected. Once the signal makes it through the AV node to the ventricles, the QRS should look completely normal. So no problem there. The only problem is where again? Where did I say the problem? What section of the EKG? The, where the, th the three little from here to here. Yeah. What do you call this? I can't the, remember. 
P R. P to the R. Interval. This is where it gets longer. All right. It's going to be beyond 0.20 seconds or beyond five little squares. When that happens, you have yourself a first degree. So write down PR interval greater than 20, 0.20 equals first degree AV block. PR interval, you can abbreviate PRI, whatever, greater than 0.20 equals first degree AV block. And that's it. And it's going to be constant. The PR interval is going to be, let's say it's 0 0.24, 0 0.24, 0 0.24. It's all going to be the same. Something is happening in here that is blocking the impulse from the SA to the AV. Okay. So how long does it take you to get from your house to here to Careers Unlimited? Um, like, I want to say like, oh, like 15 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Okay. Let's say you travel the same road all the time. If there's an accident or a detour, you're going to have to find another way. It may take you longer. See, you have a small delay, but you found another way to come here. It may take you 17 minutes or 20 minutes. Greater than 0.20. I say it took you 25 minutes. And we're like, Cynthia, why are you late? Well, there was a traffic slowdown or an accident, right? Find your way around. That is in first degree AV block. Okay? So think about that example. Traffic, traveling. Because that's what is happening here. The signal is traveling from your here, from the SA node. Boom. Atria are depolarized. Signal continues to travel down, 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 up to the ventricles. The AV node, right before the ventricles are depolarized, this is what we measure from here to here, PR interval. You got it? Yes. Okay, so it's gonna be constant. Remember, that's another key fact. The PR interval should be constant. Why? Because when we know, we learn about the other ones right now, you're gonna see that um, the PR interval actually changes sometimes. Sometimes shorter, sometimes longer, 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 longer. That's gonna be another one. All right, so are you looking at the book? No. No, okay. Let me see if I can share it with you real quick. It's cause it's, uh, it's hard. It makes like your screen really small when I have both open. Oh, really? Yeah, cause my laptop's like kind of small. Small, okay. What's this? Oh, let's take, oh, hello, I'm the wrong chapter. We're in heart block dysrhythmias. Okay, let's look at this uh, quick video, see if it helps you understand a little bit better. Okay, everybody, this section is still referencing um, the, the, the actions of the AV node and the bundle of Hiss. So we're still talking about the issues that occur between the atrias and then the ventricles. So we're talking about that junction. <clears throat> what we're looking at here with the junctional, with, with junctional rhythms, usually people either struggle, struggle with the junctional rhythms and how to name them, or they struggle with the heart blocks. So we're gonna talk about what happens here in this section that loses communication between the atrias up top and then your ventricles down here on the bottom. So when we talk about this particular item we're looking at here, we have, when we, we ask what the rate is, one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the rate is 70. We've got that down. <clears throat> you do have P waves, QRS is narrow, T 
P wave after it. That's the same across the board. So the rhythm is regular and you have P waves. <clears throat> Excuse me. But what happens when you look at the PR interval? If you remember, the PR interval needs to be less than 0.20. And if you look at this picture, find one that marches out, kind of links in right here's a good one. So here's the onset. And then here's where that PR interval ends. Is that space greater than 0.20? If you answer yes, then you are correct. No. All right. So what we did here is we just cleaned up the picture a little bit. Remember, we're talking about atria's up here and then your ventricles down here. So with this problem where you're seeing this increase in the PR interval to greater than 0.20, you're really seeing an issue with the way that electricity is being conducted between the AV and the bundle of Hiss to get it down here to the ventricles. So if you're dealing with this, you're going to have a loss of communication or a, a, a drop or a, a sustained drop in communication between the atrias and the ventricles. So it's slowed down. So what we're saying here is that this AV node is conducting the electricity, but he's taking a little bit longer than normal to make that happen. As a result, that PR interval gets lengthened. People can live with this without any issues. Um, this is just the first in many heart blocks that can occur. So this is our first heart block and it is called a first degree heart block. First degree heart block. And this is the only one, this seems to be the biggest problem I have with students. Remember, this is the only one that you give it a first name. So who's still in charge of the rhythm? We still have a P wave, right? We know that to be a fact because you can't have a PR interval that's extended if you don't have a P wave. So you got a P wave, you got your QRS, you know it's within normal limits. You know that, the, excuse me, the QRS is within normal limits. And you're looking at this, you see this, this is a sinus rhythm because we said the rate was 70, right? And the P wave is in charge. So this is the only rhythm in the heart blocks that you would give it a first name. So it's sinus rhythm with, that's a little signal for with, a first degree heart block. And that is how you determine the first degree heart block. It is just an extended length, you can see it here, to here, it's greater than one big block. So that means that it is a first degree heart block. And that's how you name it. Cynthia, are you there? Yes. I'm sorry, I left for a minute. Um, what do you think about first degree AV blocks? Well, they're pretty simple to like point spot. out. How are you going to spot them now? What's the main characteristic? Um, when they're 
More than five blocks. Five little blocks, right? 0.20 seconds. Remember each big block is 0.20. Each little block is 0 0.04. So you count the little blocks and multiply it times 0 0.04 and that should give you the, the duration. If you have 10 blocks, 10 little blocks, you multiply times 0 0.04, that'll give you four seconds, right? And so on. So all you gotta do is measure that PR interval. And in first degree, remember that it's constant. That PR interval, if it's 0.24, it's gonna be 0.24 for all of them. And that's your first degree. So that was pretty easy, right? Yes. Okay, well, don't get too confident because it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. It's not complicated, it's confusing because they all sound the same. So, where are we? Okay. Hmm. Do, do, do. I guess it's only right that we do like an example of something. Hmm. I'm trying to look for an example for you. Time goes by so fast. Mm, it's not the one I want to see. Let me just go back and share the book. Oh, I'm not sharing. Am I sharing the screen with you? The videos? Uh, the, you shared the video with me, but you're oh, not right, sharing. I'm not sharing anything. Okay, I want you to see this real quick because so you won't forget. Bless you. No, that was my dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bless your dog. <laughs> bless your dog. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, so the link's right here. You can you can click on them and it'll kind of give you a help you to remember. They're uh, I don't know what they call them. Uh, ac is it not pseudonyms acronyms? No, there's another word for it. Here, look at this one. Our blocks are like relationships. The P and the QRS are dating and never leave each other's side. Oh, that's cute, right? This is a normal sentence rhythm. Then the first degree of your block, which is talked about, says the P and the QRS have had an argument and they are keeping their distance, right? And then uh, we haven't covered the other ones, but the point is I was trying to make is you can go ahead and look at these uh, links and I think they're very helpful to help you um, kind of, you know. Uh, that picture is linked in the website it's, it's right here oh. you're looking at the screen right yes this one and then the hard black poem that's another one i think they help you remember things if the r is far from p then you have a first degree hmm. if the r is far from p so the p's over here and the r so it kind of rhymes you get it if the r is far from p then you have a first degree it's supposed to be a little rhyme and then we're going to go to the other ones, uh, maybe on uh, Friday when we meet here. Okay, so we go into second degree, third degree. Uh, second degree has two types. We call them Winky Bach, and then we call them Mobits. So second degree type one and second degree type two. This is where I tell it gets confusing with the names because type two has, uh, second degree has two, two different kinds. And then of course, type three. If P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a third degree. So you get it. I think these are helpful to remember, right? To identify them. Yeah. I hope the uh, other students can um, look, watch the videos and um, so they can get an idea of what we're gonna be talking about on Friday. Otherwise they're gonna be a little bit lost. I was looking for the book here.
I don't see it. Do you see it on your screen? I don't know if you have it. Yeah, you have to go through that through that page and. Oh, okay, okay. All the way to the bottom, just scroll down. Yeah, like that, like chapter five. Oh, I see, I see seven, and then I guess we could do it here too. It's in seven, but eight. Here it is. Ah, here it is. There you go. You see that now? Yes. I covered first degree. Oops. Not too far. So second degree, no, we were in first degree. There we are. I want to make it bigger. Oh. So you saw the video and did it help you understand? Or you already had a good understanding? No, I was kind of confused, but the video helped me. Okay, very good. Oh, what happened? I was just trying to fit one page. Okay, so here, let me get myself out of the way. Where is the block, A or B? It's pretty obvious, right? B. B is correct, B is correct. You see the prolonged PR interval? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so remember to make yourself some index cards with the, um, with the different criteria and highlight the difference to what makes that, that rhythm um, unique. Why makes it different than the other ones, okay? Like students, every student is different, right? The way they look, the way they talk, the way they behave, the way, you know, everything is different that makes them unique. So these rhythms should are also unique. So treat them like a person, get to know them, uh, how they are, how they behave, what they look like. I guess that would be a good example to think about rhythms, just like people. All righty, then I'm going to end it right here, Miss Cynthia. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, I think, I hope you learned, and I think you did learn quite a bit today. Yeah, because um, yesterday I was doing my index cards and I was so confused. I was okay. Well, see, when you make the index cards and then you come in here and when you have questions, I think that's that's the way it should be done. Uh, so you can have a basic idea. And then when we come in here and I, I explain it to you and they can watch the videos and all that, see all that stuff is there for you. But if you don't take advantage of it, then you know it's hard. And then if you still don't understand, then that's why I come in again, right? Sir, I don't understand this. Why is it this and that? That's, that's what we're supposed to discuss in class, right? The difference help you understand, okay? Okay. All right, so continue doing your index cards and we'll see you on Friday, okay? Please, are you up to date with your assignments? If not, please do so. Um, I think I'm just missing the chapter six test because it got closed on me. It got closed on you? Okay, I'm gonna open it right now. Let me do that right now. And in chapter seven, I will also open it so you can start on it. Again, it, you know, if you do things um, on time, like, you know, you don't leave it to the last minute, it's not that much. This, this short course is not much. It is a little fast. But again, if you devote even, I don't know, um, a couple of hours, maybe an hour a day, you should be fine. You know, you, you'll do fine and you'll learn. But you got to devote at least an hour of actual assignments doing those little activities that we have on there. That should help you quite a bit. All right, so I just opened uh, chapter six. Thank you. So you can start it today and I'm going to open chapter seven uh, also. Okay. Okay. All right, then I'll see you on Friday, Miss Cynthia. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good day. Sayonara.